Hi, my name is Colin Levy, and I'm the director of Project Durian, aka Cintel. Um, and I wanted to show you guys a little bit about the structure of our Annie uh, folder within our Durian production repository. This is uh, the uh, directory that I sort of maintain throughout the duration of the project, and specifically the animatic underscore edit dot blend, which is um, where the most up-to-date version of the movie always was uh, as we were working on it. Um, so uh, this is right here, this is um, the whole repository. As you can see, uh, the biggest um, folder directory is Pro, and that's for production files, textures, models, scenes. Annie is actually just mainly renders that's, that's um, you know, uh, taking up all that space. So go in the Annie directory and you'll see this animatic edit dot blend. Let's just open that up. Well, it's already open. Okay, so here is the animatic edit, and as you can see, um, it's uh, the sequencer is open, um, and uh, the frame range goes from zero to two one three one two twenty one thousand frames. Um, so as I scrub here, you'll see the entire movie, and uh, this is we're currently looking at the color grade scene. So uh, this up here is where you can access all the different scenes in um, uh, in in the file, and basically every scene is like a different sequence. It's basically a different edit of something. Um, a lot of them have to do with the exact same thing that you're looking at here. The whole, the you know the final movie. Um, this is the one that we have set aside for color grading, um, but you'll see a couple of them look look uh, look very similar. So if we go to master edit, this one is a lot more complex. I'm going to maximize this. Holy smokes. Look at all this, you know, a lot of stuff here. Um, but essentially, you scrub through it and it's the same thing. Um, what is happening here behind the scenes is, uh, I'm just going to go to color grade because it is a lot simpler to look at. Um, is uh, these are referencing files in that any directory. And if we look at the strip input over here, we can access that by hitting N. Uh, we'll see that in the any directory, there's a render folder. In render, there's 04.1c underscore comp. So I'm just going to hide Blender for a sec so we can check out the render folder. And in this folder, there are some folders, like subfolders. But most of these are avis that uh, have been uh, generated from image sequences of EXR files that we have rendered from the farm. So just to open up a random shot, okay, so this is an, an example of a shot that we get back from the farm and that happens automatically or happened automatically as we're working on it uh, in the render directory. Now you, you'll see that um, every shot actually has a corresponding um, avi in the render underscore gl folder and this this is um, the uh, the open gl like play blasts of animation so it probably should be called animation gl but it's like open gl is ready to be rendered um, and uh, these actually are in folders so if we go to the same um, shot you'll see this is what it looks like before it's rendered. Um, but this found a place in, in the edit. When this is all we had, you know, uh, there was a mix. At a, a, uh, for the majority of the project, there was a mix of storyboards, um, layout, OpenGL renders, and then final renders. Um, so, going back to Blender, you can see right now in this um, color grade sequence, all there is, uh, this is like the simple version of everything, uh, of the edit. So this is the final edit with only the, uh, the renders linked in. Um, if we go back to master edit, this is the one that I was maintaining throughout. So this is the one that I worked on for the majority of the project. And um, basically for some scenes, there are three levels. There is the final render. And I'm just going to press H to hide. Underneath that, there's the OpenGL, and underneath that, 
is my layout. So this is um, an interesting way to look at the progression of scenes. So if I actually hide the, f the top two layers on um, of all these uh, the render strips and the uh, render GL strips by pressing H, you can have um, you can take a look at what um, the layout was. So this is what I spent a great deal of time um, in the project doing is figuring out the blocking of the characters, the blocking of the camera moves, the edit, and the timing. Um, and so this is basically what was handed to the animators, um, but the timing is actually pretty good. I mean, right for this particular scene, it's frame accurate. So whatever the the timing and the layout was, that's how much time um, the animator had to do their their work. Um, so I'm just gonna unhide the render GL so you can see uh, William's work on the scene. And you'll see that uh, you know the shots are not consistent. You know, sometimes it's um, the proxy model, sometimes it's the full model, sometimes characters are missing, like in this shot. Um, but it's it's really interesting to take a look at. And then finally, the renders. Now, uh, not everything is so neatly laid out. Um, the process of working on Durian, I think, was a lot more messy than uh, Big Buck Bunny, which had, which was very, very um, structured. Um, if you look at the animatic or the, the live edit dot blend from the Big Buck Bunny repository, it looks beautiful. There's meta strips that you can tab into, um, but you can see the storyboards, the layout, uh, or the, the animatic, all the way to the final film, and it's it's all frame accurate and um, nothing is missing basically. And here it's a little bit more um, uh, random. Um, timing definitely changed between um, layout and animation, and sometimes, um, and certainly between um, storyboard and, and layout. So, uh, one of the things I did near the end of the project was I made a four split um, uh, view of the film where you can see the final film and then you can see the uh, animatic, the, the, the layout, and the storyboards edited to that final timing. So if you check out the, um, for example, the, the layout, go into the scenes for split layout, and this is the layout for the entire scene, for the entire film with the timing of that final movie. So there's a little bit of shifting around to, to make it match. Um, same thing with OpenGL. This can, of course, be a lot uh, more exact. And the storyboards, you're going to have to tab into this meta strip um, so that the uh, proportions are right. Uh, interesting. None of these storyboards seem to be linking in. That's because they're all relative absolute paths. Okay, this is going to have to be fixed. Sorry, but to fix this, I'm just going to change the path like so. So we've got the storyboards, um, but this is edited retrospectively. And my point is that this is maybe interesting to look at, but probably more interesting is to actually um, look at the storyboards as they were when I edited them originally. So we actually have a scene for that. If you go into um, the scene menu again, go to storyboards, this is actually, you know, uh, a copy of the scene of the whole film um, as it was when the project was only existed in storyboards, um, which, you know, we had a limited amount of time to do, uh, so they're not beautiful. Um, and unfortunately, probably most of the audio will not link in. Uh, but there's, there wasn't much audio, it's just for the two shaman scenes. Um, so, that might be interesting. Uh, a lot of, of the transform effect strips, just because of 
um, the work being done in 2.5, uh, especially the sequencer stuff, um, probably do not have animation anymore. Um, it's really annoying. But I did do a little bit of camera movement in, um, in the storyboards, um, but it was just such a pain to actually retain that, that data, uh, because as soon as you move stuff around, um, because of it, it was pretty buggy at the time, uh, I would lose it. So in this case, on this strip, there's probably animation data. And if I go over to this view, which is the graph editor, you'll see these two channels, scale X and scale Y. So that's what I animated. If I press home, you'll see that, in fact, there are curves here. And really, that should line up with the end with the playhead right here. I'm going to maximize this and just move those strips, uh, those curves over. And do the same thing here. And move that to the beginning. And so now this, well, timing needs work. But that's closer to what we actually had. It's going to be a quicker uh, dolly, dolly in properly. Um, but we've also got the teaser trailer edited here, um, uh, which might also be interesting to look at. So, uh, what else? 2K. These reference, I mean, unless you're at the Blender Institute, these are not going to work for you because these. Um, reference our shared directory and these are all 2k jpegs we can swap, swap them out for exrs using this script over here um, in the top right but uh, this is the sequence that we the actual sequence we use to export the final movie uh, you oh one real quick thing you might be wondering what this um, what this layer is of these like yellow strips and that is actually what we ended up using for our scene markers. Um, the current implementation of the markers, uh, the feature, um, is a little bit hacky. Um, in my, that's my impression of it. Uh, basically, um, one of the things I wanted early on was was to have those markers automatically transform with whatever uh, strips you're, you're moving. So, like for example, if I have everything to the right of the playhead selected, which is control right click. And then I move right now. Um, they do move with your transformation if you have transform markers ticked on. However, um, if I deselect those, you know, the strips and I don't know, grab, grab this guy and move it. Grab this guy and move it you'll see actually the markers are <laughs> moving too. So the markers do not, the, the selection of the markers has to be done down here um, instead of in the actual um, uh, sequencer. So anyway, it, it's just was sort of a pain and of course that functionality will hopefully change um, but it's just a lot easier for us, um, for Jan's sake especially, to, uh, to know uh, when, where the timing has changed for sound design purposes and music too, um, just to have these invisible color strips hovering above the change between our each of our scenes, um, and they can you know be named and uh, function basically the same. Um, okay, so that is that. Uh, I think this, you know, unless you have the full eight gigabytes of render files in the Durian directory, this is probably of limited use to you. But um, in terms of how we set it up, how we actually uh, worked with Blender to maintain the whole edit, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm not really sure what else to share, but if you have questions, certainly let me know, and uh, maybe I can do another video. Thanks.